Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ruby reading or fanfiction reading stuff. I'm back and I sound different yet again. Um, I think I sound better. Um, I tested everything out. I'm bringing music back. Um, definitely even with how bad the quality of the PlayStation or the last headset I just had. Even with how bad that quality was, I, st I couldn't... I needed music, so I brought back some music. It is going to be about four songs looping in one. Um, there's ambient music from Dawn of War, the Warhammer, or Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War. Um, so just putting that out there, it is not my music, it is somebody else's. And uh, I'm going to be using that as the ambient music. Um, I do have a new headset. Um, it is a different mic. And it does still have an annoyance to it, which is a buzzing. Hopefully, I think the louder I talk, it overpowers the buzzing. The only time it should really come up is when I'm not talking. Because I was playing around with my TeamSpeak options, and with the noise gate, whenever I was talking, the buzzing subsided. It didn't fully go away, but it subsided it was like not really there and also I can't hear myself so I'm actually checking Bandicam to see if I can if it's picking everything up which is why I'm looking at that but guys welcome back this is chapter 35 and so I missed two days I just didn't want to record anything with that crappy mic and put it up and be like hey guys here's another episode that sounds even shittier so, here we go, better mic, still has some sort of annoyance to it, but hey, it's not muffled or a Bluetooth. Um, and we have music again. And as I said, hopefully it should be shuffling, at, or repeat. Um, nah, I won't put it on shuffle, but it is, wait. Actually, I'll put it on shuffle. Hopefully... I think I have to actually take that off. Yeah, I have to take repeat off. Uh, hopefully, actually, we'll see what happens. If the music just stops, then it's whatever. But let's actually start reading because this is what it is. So, chapter 35, finals. Elise stood up, stretching. It was the last day of the tournament, and she was a little nervous about her match against... Or Fia. Aaron had gotten a little more information about her, learning that she had completely crushed her opposition with her ore, easily defeating human and faunus alike. Other than that, there wasn't any information and searches for her turned up. Nothing about her past. It seemed that she was also one of the newer contestants. They had eaten a quick breakfast at a nearby cafe. Although Elise was nervous, she also quite hungry. Oh god damn it. Oh, Hold on. Sorry about that, just had to get the music back. Elise was nervous. She was also quite hungry, having spent a lot of her energy the previous day. Royce finished up her omelette and also got up w walking with Elise to the exit where Aaron waited for them. The three walked down the streets, the weather now quite chilly. A few minutes later, they reached the gym. People had already began arriving, some walking and others being dropped off. Most of the fighters had already been eliminated, but they still came to watch the final round. Elise felt a little queasy when she walked into the gym and saw the huge amount of spectators. All but one of the cages had been taken down, each final match being held individually. Bleachers had been fully stretched out, and the empty spaces were filled with folding chairs, giving the crowd ample space to sit and separate the match. Or spectate, spectate the match. A large screen was set up on one of the well walls displaying the upcoming matches and portrait portraits of the fighters. The gym is growing noisy, people buzzing excitedly as they waited for the matches to begin. The final fighters were to go in order by weight division, from the heaviest to the lightest. Elise's round was last, so she'll still have a few hours until her weigh-in. She sat down with Aaron and Weiss, trying to calm down and focus. Take a good look at 
Aaron said, pointing to the screen on the wall. You might be up against some of those people at the professional tournament. Watch how they fight and note down, note down anyone who seems strong. At least nodded, not recognizing any of the portraits on the screen. Her own face was paired with Ophia's. And she finally got her first good look at her opponent's face. Ophia had light black hair and large amethyst. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Amethyst eyes. The picture showing her lips slightly curved in a confident smile. After seeing her appearance, Elise could understand why so many people in the crowd were pulling up sons cheering for Ophia or asking for her hand in marriage. Ooh -ooh. The video screen played highlights of the previous day as the first round of fighters prepared themselves. The replays didn't reveal much as they mostly just showed the moment of victory or the final attack, but at least did see how Ophia just used brute strength to knock her opponents out, not bothering to use any moves or techniques, but instead just punched them and aimed for their joints until they were too bruised to continue blocking. Half an hour later, the first round began. The heavyweight classes consisted of two hulking contestants, one a bull faunus and the other human. The noise of a rose. Oh shit. Ooh. Sorry about that. The noise level rose as Bull walked into the gym and towards the cage, getting into position. The human walked in after him, looking calm as he mentally prepared himself. Knew it. Uh... Once both of them were in the cage, the referee gave the signal to begin. Both of them fled their oars, immediately charging at each other, swinging. The human slammed in a, slammed in a knee into the bull Farnes's middle, but the bull ignored it, continuing his charge and cinching the human. They collided into the metal wall of the cage, and the bull Farnes started smashing a fist into the human's head, each blow making the human's oar fade. He struggled weakly under the barrage, trying to throw a weak, throw a few hits back, but they were weak and inefficient, and his legs eventually gave out, collapsing to the floor. The bull didn't stop immediately, dropping down and continuing to punch the human's head. The crowd roared, some of them cheering while others shouted for the human to get up. The referee was about to stop them when the human suddenly dodged one of the punches, the bull's fist slamming into the floor with a thudding concussion as the human swung his head to the side. With a quick motion, he drew his legs up to his chest under the bull and kick, kicked out, sending the bull stumbling back as he flipped himself upright. Yeah, let's go. The two started circling each other, wary. The human pivoted and swung out with a roundhouse kick, but the bull raised an arm and blocked the kick, and then slid his arm under the human's leg and grabbed it. The human was pulled off balance, hoping, hopping forward, in a desperate attempt to avoid falling over, but the bull pushed forward and shoved the human down, putting him in a leg lock and hyperextending his knee. The human tried to resist, trying to sit himself back up, but he eventually tapped out, wanting to end it before his knee was permanently damaged. The judge pulled the bull off and the human retracted his leg, hissing in pain as he cradled it. Applause ran out from the crowd as the bull pranced, pranced around the cage bellowing in victory as the human was helped out of their arena limping. The next match was the lightweight, light heavyweight division, two Faunus battling it out. The match lasted five rounds, neither of the contestants would like to give up. <sighs> as their faces accumulated cuts and bruises, blood splattering onto the floor at the end of the match, the winner was decided by the panel of judges the result, a draw. At least watch fascination as the matches progressed. The lightweight class was especially notable. A monkey faunus landing a few a flying kick on a human by pushing off the cage for extra momentum, then spinning and smashing an elbow into the human's temple, dropping him. Featherweight classes were in progress when a judge tapped her on the soldier, telling her to go change and do the final weigh in. Good luck, Weiss and Air Weiss and Aaron said simultaneously. They think you can't win, Aaron added. No matter how much humans pretend they think differently, they want to see a little human girl take down a stronger, faster promise. At least wondered where he was going with this. 
Don't let the crowd affect you. Give this match all you've got and prove them wrong, he declared, staring into her eyes with a fiery passion. Elise gave him a little smile and nodded, heading to the locker room. The cheering of the crowd penetrated the walls as Elise changed, her hands trembling a little from nerves and excitement. After the weigh-in, she sat in one of the waiting areas, listening for an announcement that would be the signal for her to walk in. The announcer called out her name and Elise stood up, taking a deep breath as she left the waiting area and walked into the gym. Camera flashes momentarily blinding her as she walked through the door. She briefly wondered if any of her co-workers would see her fight. But banished that thought and all others as she entered the cage and took up her position at one end, trying to ignore the loud audience. Orpheus' name was announced and she walked in. Her amethyst eyes bright and a confident grin on her face. She was the same height as Elise. With a slim profile and wary muscles, her light black hair and a short ponytail, her small chest perfectly suiting her overall image. The crowd roared upon seeing her, Ophia clearly being a fan favorite after her performance the day before. She raised a hand in acknowledgement, turning the crowd on both sides and smiling. The trees grew louder and Elise heard someone scream, Marry me! over of the den of noise. The human girl's lips twitched a little as she heard the words, trying not to laugh as she stepped into the cage. They were positioned at opposite sides, the guards up and waiting for the referee to give this thing. Motherfucker! Oh, 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 oh. oh my god, I keep yawning all the time. The moment the round started, Elise immediately went all out, flying her aura and taking a step forward, then rotating her torso and gathering momentum. First swinging toward the human as she pull, as she pull out, put all of her force behind that one punch. At least caught a glimpse of Ophelia's eyes, went widening before the, before her first slipped through the human girl's gar and slammed into her midsection, blowing her backward. Her body slammed into the metal of the metal wall of the cage with a loud rattle. Her back to the metal fencing as she hits the floor and slumped over. The crowd suddenly went silent, shocked by what just happened. The referee began to walk towards Ophia, checking to see if she was if she was conscious. Ophia suddenly raised an arm, palm out, signaling to the referee that she was fine. The crowd renewed their cheering as Ophia raised her head and looked up at Elise. Eyes glowing, there was a vibration in the air as Ophia's aura flared into existence around her. Her body now shredded in a steel gray tinted with a bright purple. In a blur, Ophelia was on Elise, slamming blow after blow into her, alternating with jabs and leg kicks. Elise could do nothing but defend herself, her aura being depleted as Ophelia punched her over and over again. Forcing Elise back into the wall of the cage, their oars collided as Ophelia kneed Elise in the stomach, the metal fencing behind Elise creaking as the force lifted her feet off the ground and hurled her into the side of the cages. Oh my god, I thought I didn't get that recorded. I looked up and I looked up here and I thought I oh my god. Oh if that happened. Rafia continued this for a while, each blow lifting Elise off her feet and bouncing her off of the wall behind her, suddenly stopping Ophelia took a few steps back, taking advantage of Elise's disorientation from the blows. With a running leap, Ophelia twisted in midair and slammed a flank kick into Elise upraised, Elise's upraised arms, feeling a crack as her forearms fractured. The wall's hinges couldn't take the abuse any longer. With a scream of tearing metal, the wall behind Elise collapsed, the kick sending her flying out of the cage. The audience cried out as Elise was blown back into the crowd, people scrambling out of their chairs as Elise smashed into the ground. The metal fencing clattered away from her. Head spinning, Elise tried to stand up, her legs wobbly. The referee looked shocked and more than a little confused as Ophelia turned and began to walk away, believing she had won. The crowd let out a gasp when Ophelia spun around, surprised to see Elise standing back up, while Aura encircled her arms as she healed the broken bones. I'm not going down so easily. Elise muttered, flaring her orb again as she walked back into the cage. Hell yeah, girl. Mm-hmm. Do it. They ran at each other again, and one of the cage walls missing. The referee decided to let it play out. This time, Elise traded blows, 
focusing less on defense and more on offense as they punch, kick, and elbow each other. The tide turned against Elise once again as her aura started flickering, running out. Ophia's aura was still glowing strongly. Ophia was still having a lot more in reserve than Elise. Then, with the palm strike to her, the head, Elise's aura cracked and fills it out. She stumbled backwards, dazed as Ophia raised her leg and landed a frontal kick in Elise's abdomen, sending her skidding across the floor and tumbling into one of the remaining metal walls. Elise tried to stand up again, her muscles spasming as she gasped for breath, her vision going fuzzy. Letting out a resigned sigh, her legs failed her as or failed her as she collapsed back onto the ground exhausted. She stared at the ceiling, blinking the sweat out of her eyes as she listened to the referee declare Ophia the winner, the crowd going wild. And then two purple eyes stared down at her as Ophia extended a hand, pulling Elise up. Thanks, Elise said, standing, stumbling a bit, her legs still unable to support her. I'd fucking be like, get the fuck away from me, you fucking bitch, if Ophia had fucking did that. Either that or I wouldn't fucking accept her hand and be like, fuck that. I mean, good match, but fuck that shit. Ophia shifted Elise onto her shoulder, bearing her weight. That was a good fight, Elise. Elise soon. I forgot that was her full name. She said, grinning. It's been a while since I've had a good match with someone of my age. You completely crushed me, Elise admitted as they walked down the steps and towards the locker room. The crowd was cheering, camera flashes leaving behind Starverse and Elise's eyes. You can call me Elise. Don't you have an award or something to pick up now? Fia shook her head as she opened the door to the locker room, guiding Elise in. The award ceremony takes place after our fight in about 30 minutes. They, cha they changed together, wiping off their sweat with towels, putting on track pants t-shirts. As they sat there for a while talking, Elise learned that this was also Orfia's first time. I'm not, actually, I'm not actually supposed to be here, Orfia admitted. I come from a family of musicians, and my parents completely disapprove of this. Elise was thought. What? I started doing martial arts as a re recreational activity, Orfia explained. My parents didn't really mind, thinking that it was just a harmless sport. The more I suddenly activated, I started focusing more on martial arts. My parents wouldn't accept that, so now I'm here to win something and prove to them that I'm actually good at this. Orfia let out its eyes, starting staring at the same, clearly relieved to have someone to talk to and confess to. Well, I work as a nurse, Elise said, smiling. I'm also here to prove something to myself. Finn nodded. I recognized you after I saw you hear your arms, she said. Sorry about that, by the way. Elise held her, held out her arms, twisting them around and demonstrating how they weren't broken anymore. Don't worry, they're good as new. Hey, do you want to see something cool? Or feel suddenly asked. Uh, sure, Elise said. Ophelia held up the edge of her jacket with her hand, stretching the thin fabric between her fingers. Softly sang one pure, clear note. The fabric instantly split, a perfectly straight cut appearing on the cloth part parting. My semblance, Ophelia started, stated. At least stared, and I thought I I thought healing was cool. These awestruck. I don't really understand that. It's like pure with her magnetism, because you know magnets are cool too. Well, it's more you more useful than my zombots in most cases, Ophelia said modestly. You could be a surgeon, Elise suggested. Perfect incisions every time. Ophelia shook her head with a smile and changed the topic. They walked. They talked for a little longer before Ophelia looked up, checking the clock. We should we should start heading back, Ophelia said, standing up. The award ceremony is soon, and I'm sure you have people waiting for you. Come with me. I'll introduce you to my friends. They exited the locker room together, heading back into the crowd to wait a bit. With Aaron and White, Spitwell made way for the two, standing back at a safe distance while begging them for autographs at the same time. They both signed a few before finally reaching the two, sitting down with them and ignoring the people around them. Weiss immediately hugged a Weiss immediately hugged Elise upon seeing her, worried after seeing Ophelia knock her out of the cage. Go okay, Elise, she asked, checking her for signs of injury. Elise hugged Weiss back, smiling. I'm fine, I'm fine, stop embarrassing me, she laughed. 
This is Orphea, she said, turning and introducing the purple-eyed girl. So it's, it's like Yang. Weiss narrowed her eyes at Orphea, then she stuck out her hand. I'm Weiss, she stated. I still don't like how you hurt her, but I'm glad you two enjoyed yourselves. Nice to meet you, Orphea said, taking her hand and shaking it. Aaron also introduced himself as Elise Trainer, discussing martial arts with Orphea for a while before the award ceremony began. Gian. That was a weird way I said that. The names of the top three were called up by weight class, with the least division going last. They were given medals in Lien, bowing together or bowing together as a crowd snapped photographs. After the award ceremony was over, Ophia executed her accused herself. Oh, excused, excused herself, needing to go home to tell her parents the good news. The traded con contact information before leaving, promising to see each other at the next tournament. So how was it? Aaron asked as they walked back to the hotel. Surprisingly enjoyable, Elise said grinning. They made a new friend. Glad you liked it, Aaron said. Once we get back home, we need to start training for the upcoming tournament. There was a sun a sound of running footsteps and someone yelled, Wait! Weiss spun around, reaching for a Mayonnaise before remembering that she had left it back at the hotel, unable to bring it into the gym because of security reasons. She breathed a sigh of relief as she saw a reporter running towards them, the cameraman struggling to keep up behind them. Behind him. Do you think you could give us an interview? The reporter asked out of breath. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw you, the miracle nurse, participating in this fighting team. At least hesitated about to refuse just a few statements, the reporter promised. I just want your feelings on the final match and your plans for the next tournament. Oh, I was just checking bandy cam and it, it took a minute to respawn. This fucking thing. This thing. Ugh. I think I... Ugh, I hate that. It's so annoying. Alright, Elise conceded, realizing that the fastest way to get him to leave was to answer his questions. The cameraman began to record as the reporter repeated the question and pointed the microphone towards her. It was a good fight, Lee said, and I learned a lot. As for my plans, well, I'm going to the train hard and keep improving, and see where I go from there. The reporter nodded and spoke a few more words into the camera before motioning for the filming to stop. He thanked her for her time, and they walked away, looking for more people to interview. The train ride home was uneventful. The three arriving safely, Aaron dropped the pair off at Elise's house, reminding them that the training would begin ag begin again in three days. Elise has grown good naturally. Good naturally. Naturally. I don't know how to talk. And Aaron laughed, driving off. Lisa is beginning to feel sore, the last fight's bruises and injuries becoming more noticeable as her adrenaline and excitement began to fade. I need a hot bath, Elise groaned, plopping herself down on the couch. I'll set it up for you, Weiss said. Just take a nap or something. Elise smiled grateful as Weiss rushed off to the bathroom, hearing the faucet beginning to run. She had dozed off when Elise gently shook her awake, telling her that the bath was ready. Weiss helped her to the bathroom where she began to strip off her clothes. She stared at her for a while, flushing when Elise caught her looking. Elise pulled off the rest of the clothes slowly and seductively, grinning when Weiss coughed and turned away, opening the door to leave. Come on, we can take a bath together, Weiss whispered, sliding her arms around Weiss, chest and chest pressing against chest pressing chest and pressing her breast against hers. Weiss gulped and managed to blush even deeper, but she quickly took off her jacket and clothes, eager to join Elise. They slipped into the tub together, foregoing all pretense of bathing as they stood against each other, kissing and moaning, their skin slippery and warm as they made love. Water spilled out of their tub as Weiss made Elise pant and wither, then Elise did the same to her, sound to pleasure filling the bathroom. The two got out of the bathtub quite while later deliciously exhausted. They shared a large robe kerosene 
caressing and kissing underneath it as they tumbled onto the couch, falling asleep in each other's arms. Oh boy. So, sorry about that. Um, especially that speed reading, the last two paragraphs. I don't mind reading that kind of stuff, but. Eh. Eh. So guys, that was chapter 35, finals. Um, sorry about not uploading two, uh, for two days, and it would actually make it three days because I don't, I kind of want to wait for um, the 12th or tomorrow to put this up because I actually forget what time I put the other episode up. But I do want to stick to schedule where I put these up like midday, like say five, five thirty. 4, 4.30, like somewhere along those lines. So I'll probably, I'll end up uploading this to my channel tonight, waiting to put it, like actually make it public um, until the next day. But yeah guys, that was the chapter. Um, even though you didn't do it for the other video, thanks. Um, comments don't really concern me, but when I ask you guys if you do make it to this point in the video, please let me know what you think of the quality um i'd like there's a music help like please give me feedback i really do want to know and like you don't act, like don't be like oh you fucking sound terrible like actually try and have constructive criticism and even though i haven't got shit comments because fucking i don't know that's actually surprising for youtube and then again i'm a nobody so yeah but please let me know what you thought um, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe? Yeah, whatever. Subscribe for more. All the bullshit. Bullshot. 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 That everybody wants and all that. For the people who actually watch this, thank you so much for watching. And, uh, take care, guys.